Okay, so we have Taylor and uh, Dita Clifton here, and uh, they're coming on the podcast. Guys, and ladies, is this the first time you've come on a podcast? For me, yes. I've done it one other time. A little nervousness or no? You're good. I'm good. We're good. And, and uh, so you guys do with a bookkeeping company. Uh, tell us just a little bit. We're going to get more into the show, but just tell us a little bit about that bookkeeping company. Um, well, it's different than most bookkeeping companies. <laughs> most people think that bookkeeping is bookkeeping, accounting, and taxes. Mm -hmm. In my world, it's bookkeeping, admin, and phones. So, yes, we do bookkeeping, but that is not all we do. We are all about operations. Taylor, you got anything to add to that? Nope, she said it perfectly. You said you concur. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I agree. <laughs> okay. All right. Hopefully you guys enjoy the show. The changing landscape of the housing market in Las Vegas requires a real estate professional that understands how to get your offer accepted, willing to go above and beyond for service and accountability. Hi, my name is Dan French. I've been in the real estate and financing industry for over 13 years. Most real estate agents struggle with answering their phone. Please call me directly, 702-557-6176. I'm available for all your real estate needs. Let me know if my head gets in the way. Dan's a fantastic man. He really is. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome. And what's going on, everybody? This is Dan French. This is a Saturday morning. That means it's the French Workbench Podcast. And uh, we got Brett over here. Brett Jenny's in studio. Mr. Joe Dragon. We got a great crew for you guys today. And I want to bring a couple things up. So we have a nice, nice studio uh, of people here today. We got a guest here. Beautiful guests, bookkeeping, talk about the office squad. And uh, let me see something real quick. I just want to throw this out real quick. Check the mic and make sure it's Yeah, out. man. You that's what I'm there. talking just about check right the mic. there. You know what I mean? Throw, let's get the part. Oh, yo, it's DJing yo. today. Oh, so, yeah. DJing today. So, We're coming down. Play. <laughs> oh, I was going to start freestyling. Dude, no? so okay. we got Mr. Brett Jenny in studio. What's up, Brett? What's going on, buddy? I was going to start you? freestyling there, man. You I haven't heard you... my free... Did you guys know that I'm a great freestyle rapper? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just no, kidding. No. I'm not. I'm, I'm horrible. <laughs> Brett, I thought you were like the great white hope or something like that. I used to be. I, I mean, I was going to be offered a show on the strip here, and I decided to just be a realtor instead. <laughs> Wow, that was a real big mistake. Yeah, yeah, no, nah, yeah, <laughs> man. I'm the rapping realtor. I didn't tell you that. <laughs> well, you guys don't yeah. know this show. This is the most real behind the scenes information regarding financing, real estate, money talk, entrepreneurs going on here in Las Vegas. I'm your host, Dan French, streaming live from studio here in Henderson and Las Vegas. No pre recording. <laughs> no pre recording. Mess up. If you guys right like here. the channel, like the channel, hit that button, right? Also, we have over here. Mr. Joe Dragon is back. Joe, what's up, buddy? How are you? I'm good. I got the shades back on. Dude, we needed you know, those shades. Joe, attorney at large, Dragon. At large? Mm hmm. Law. Attorney at large. Okay. <laughs> attorney at large. Yeah, I'm doing well, Dan. How are you doing? Good, man. Nice. What's what's going on in your world, man? How's life? Um, It's good. It's getting hot outside. Yeah, it is you starting know, to get like hot, that. right? Like, really starting I'm to get starting hot. to really not like the summers. So, so weird. those shades when the, when he came in, those shades are really starting to wear on me, man. Because I like them, and I was like, you know, that's a different. I thought he was gonna go snowboarding after this, but no, dude, he's right. Dude, to put a fishing pole in the water. Yeah, it's 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 legit, dude. Like, where did you get those at? I got them uh, actually in Hawaii. Did you really? really? Oh yeah, oh yeah. You know, too much sun there, and uh, I'm setting trends right now. So, dude, how this long is kind of back from what? Dude, 80s, he, he, 90s? Uh, he takes his race car to go fishing with those. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. You can see the fish NASCAR. right through. NASCAR. So. You have, you have those, uh, those hats with the, you know, the beer uh, no, straws no, coming down? No? No. Dude, you haven't even partied till you did that. No. Dude, that's what Brett does back that's in how Wisconsin. That's we tailgate Wisconsin. Yeah, man. you love that. But that's how you tailgate. We just did the old funnel, the old bear back in college. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> None of that. None of that Brett stuff. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's introduce our guests. We have the Office Squad, and we have... Laura, I'm sorry, Taylor and Dita. <laughs> Good Clifton. job, Dan. Da Taylor He's and Dita Clifton. Job, Brett. I want to say, job. I want to say one thing. <laughs> Go ahead. How are you guys doing today? We're good. good. How are you? Good. Good, good, good. So I uh, want to ask you guys a question. So first off, I have to do this because it's just been in my mind. So 
Dita Las Vegas. Uh, Dita Las Vegas. Oh, that's a good one. I'm that sure she's never heard Dita. Dita. Are you serious, Dita? No. <laughs> awesome. You've never met a Dan French before. <laughs> yeah, that's the problem. I would have thought of that. That's, uh, <laughs> that's hey, perfect. That's why I got the we're Las Vegas to, sign. We're going to have to, yeah, we'll have to come back. And then you can that's put your Dita new right above it in the <laughs> screenshot. <laughs> That's your new slogan, right? That's your new. Uh, that's you guys should have that as Dita your theme Las song. Vegas. We need to do that. Yeah. Dita Las Instagram. Vegas. Instagram handle. There, there you go. go. <laughs> there you go. So talk to us, ladies. Taylor, Dita, Clifton, huh. Office Squad. What are you guys about? Talk to us. Like, wh where did you guys get started? Why did you start this business? It's bookkeeping, right? Well, she started it. I joined two years ago, so I'll let you. Okay. Uh, <laughs> well, w w as we were talking earlier, mm -hmm. I um, spent a little time in the U.S. Air Force. In the early 80s, so make sure you go watch Top Gun. Oop, oop. Oh, the second one's coming out. Top Gun. Second one's coming out. People are already Can I just make a yes. quick note? I had yeah. never seen that movie until like a month ago. I'm like, this is a shut up. Fantastic oh, movie. That's why, they, <laughs> that's why people have been wanting a sequel. Anyways, yeah, sorry, go yeah, ahead. We'll it, it is a good movie, but there's not a fighter pilot alive that likes it. So. Oh, yeah, because it's all fictional, <laughs> but I don't care. Yeah, but like they, don't really, they don't fly upside really down do and that. give each other the finger? <laughs> we they're don't just, really do that. They're just not in the elite. They don't like, think the just because they feel like it and can get away with it? Huh. And if we do that, we can't tell you that we yeah, did yeah, that. Yeah, No, that's awesome. So so you're you're a big fan of Top Gun then, huh? Oh yeah. I, yeah, I married somebody just like Maverick. Yeah, yeah. she, she yeah. married Maverick. Married yeah, Maverick. So, yeah. So you were in the military, right? I was in the service for wow. six years. I worked in an F-15 fighter squadron, active duty go to war guys, and my job was to support them on the ground in operations, they answer the phone, took care of flying mm -hmm. time, all that stuff, so they could get out the door and go accomplish their mission. And when I got out and started hanging out with small business owners, I realized, oh, my God, these people are the same <laughs> as a fighter pilot. Well, um, well, in what way? That's interesting. All the pilot wants to do is go fly. Oh, so I got you. He doesn't want to deal with the paperwork. Don't yeah. care about the paperwork. Don't tell me that I got to get a phone call. Don't yeah. tell me I got to take a class. That sounds Just a lot like Tom Cruise. Airplane. To yes. a T, don't so. tell me I need to take a class. <laughs> don't tell to me. a T. So an entrepreneur is the same way. Whatever their mission is, whatever they want to grow, mm. that's all they want to think about. And so the office squad was created to support all that other BS that has to get done to make them successful. Accounting, payroll. We um, do bookkeeping. We do light accounting. Nice. But we don't do taxes. Okay. We manage payroll, but we do not process payroll. There's a large liability with that. So oh. we'll help you manage it and gotcha. get it done, but we don't process it. We use processors. You to make do sure that. it's done right, but you don't physically because you don't want to deal. with So it this like is like a virtual thing. office. I mean, is that what it is? It's a <laughs> virtual office on steroids. Yeah. Wow, and it's just you and your daughter, right? No, you guys, they have how many? Eleven how, we are eleven. Oh, wow. so you guys and you don't have a physical office. We do. We have. Oh, you do one. Another to Henderson coming soon. Okay, so what do you mean by virtual? Oh, you. So everything we do is virtual for our clients. Mm -hmm. My yeah. staff is all in-house, under the yeah. roof, managed and accountable, which gotcha. makes us way different than most virtual assistants you'll yeah. find. <laughs> so you guys, so my thing is this, you uh, you started uh, in Vegas how long ago? When did you move here or where did you work? My born? husband got assigned here in uh, 2001. Uh, 2001. Okay, yeah. so you came here. Is he in the military as well? He's retired now, but okay. he flew F-16s at Nellis. Nice. Mm -hmm. Nice. So uh, I'm just curious, uh, before we go back on your thing, did they have? Do they really have like those fighter jet parties like they do on Top Gun? You know how they all show up and they're all like, She you can't know, tell you, chastising Dan. people. No, and it's all top secret. <laughs> and her daughter's here, so. <laughs> no. yeah. well, that's really? not going to be disclosed, is Dan. It, is, that, is that what happens in, the, in that elite of people that do those, uh, fly the, the planes? It, there is a whole different culture. It is, right? I bet. Yeah. They speak their own language. They do their own thing. They yeah. work very, very hard protecting us. Nice. And they tend to party very hard. Yeah. So, yeah. Does, so let, them, th let them do what they do best, man. And yeah. Just sit back and enjoy the benefits of it. Do you feel like Tom, you feel like, <laughs> uh, Tom Cruise represents that well? Like it's just, or is it just a little it's bit too much? They all, they all look, they all, they all <laughs> look like him and Val Kilmore. We're right? just getting so much on Top Gun. Ice and Maverick. <laughs> They're... So, I'm always curious who are they fighting in Top Gun? Like the enemy? Like what is this? The like, Migs, like the Russian sudden, Migs. Yeah, all of a sudden when World War the III, the Russian they're like, oh, this is. Fun. I'm like, whoa. Well, anyhow, sorry. Secret you're stuff. Real, real quick, real quick. Go ahead, on the, off the record, 
I'm going to say off the record. Off the record. Okay, can the, can the plane actually come upside down? Off like the that? record. Off the record. Because I know, like, can they, they come upside down I, and actually I, give them the I'm finger? I'm not a pilot. Okay. <laughs> but I'm, I'm just not saying, a pilot. Okay, you were in the military. I just thought maybe they would say <laughs> flip, something. Flip the bird. <laughs> I, I, can, I can call the husband real quick and he'd probably yeah. tell you that. Yeah, I yes. want to know upside down with the middle finger. <laughs> like they oh, did. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right? That's what they did. So this is a finance show. Dude, so. That's how you really fly. <laughs> Let's be honest with you. Back on point here. <laughs> all right, sorry. That's all right. I apologize for these all elementary right, let's school get, guys. Let's get back to the subject at hand. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the office squad. Okay, so you have 11 employees. Yes, sir. So, okay, walk me through a day of when somebody would, let's say if somebody was seeking out an, a virtual office to help them. How does that process work? I'm going to give that to Taylor. Sure. Um, it very much <laughs> depends on what they need. So we do so many different things. Okay. Um, they might call us. They might email us. They might be referred to us from, you know, somebody else that they know. Mm -hmm. But the first thing is they're going to have a, probably a really long, detailed conversation with me or both of us to figure out what they need help what with and how we can fill those holes and what we can do. Okay. Um, and that's step one. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Okay. And that, and so, that varies. From mild to wild of what people exactly. need. Exactly. Yeah, okay. it can be like I'm a new real estate agent and I need a place to hang my license. Oh, and nice. The mail all the way up to I'm a company with 30 employees and my bookkeeper just quit and I don't know how to do this and I okay. need someone to take over. So gotcha. for someone like me, I've had my own law firm for two years. I'm I keep it small, just me and paralegal because I keep overhead low. Um, but what would you say that like in small business type of that situation? number one service or thing that I would need if you would just kind of spitballing. Yeah. If that makes sense. Um, the first thing I think of with law firms is someone to answer the phone, especially if it's just you and one other person. Okay. So you're doing more than just bookkeeping. Yeah. You're doing like yeah, office they, services. Yeah. Okay. All right. And your time's worth a lot of money. So you don't want to spend it. See, they, they're the actually not. They just think they are. That's the problem. <laughs> it can be. I'm just kidding. <laughs> so Depends. we can do that. Save you the time Depends. of answering all the so weird phone calls. <laughs> Yeah, gotcha. Yeah. So you're so you're interacting. So, um, because I got some uh, call-in service, right? That goes to either my paralegal or me. But are you are you more interactive with the business, like know what we're about, yeah. and that type of stuff? Mm -hmm. Gotcha. We can answer. So you're more hands-on, more like an actual assistant right. versus yeah. some. Ima imagine this. <laughs> Most call centers out there will answer the phone, mm -hmm. and then they'll patch it to you, yep. correct? Or they'll send you a message. Mm -hmm. Why are they patching it to you? Why can't the person that's answering the phone answer the question? So if we are your back office, we're doing your bookkeeping, we're helping you with your admin, we're checking your emails, we're keeping everything flowing, right? we can answer that question. Right. And then you can just carry on with your business and stuff gets done. So you take care of a whole bunch of back office. Everything. Duty, so duties. If, for instance, so, I'm yeah. like, okay, this is what I'm that's looking awesome. for. This is what type of case is looking for. You know that, so I don't have to screen it or the paralegal has to screen it. You just teach us how to do it. Yep. Yeah. Gotcha. So let's talk Dude, about cool. <clears throat> the whole process of getting started. So was there some challenges get, getting started with the job like this where, okay, first off, you got to have the vision, right? You got to think, okay, can this work? Do we believe in it? So yeah. kind of take me through the process of getting started and maybe some of the challenges you faced. Um, well, it was kind of an accident. It was um, an accident. It was an accident, absolutely. My husband, like I said, was flying active duty at Nellis. I had two girls that were in school, mm -hmm. and I wanted something that I could do from mm -hmm. home part-time, so I started a little bookkeeping business from home, and I know QuickBooks. Isn't that – that's a challenge because a lot of people don't understand QuickBooks. It's so technical, right? I mean, you open it up, and it's like, what is this? It's tedious as yeah, hell, man. It's like, what do, you, what do you do with this thing? Dude, right? it makes me Give sleep. Me, <laughs> I'm sitting there, and I'm like, like – I'm sleeping in 10 minutes. It's so, like <laughs> – so did well, it here's the other problem. Anyone can be a bookkeeper. So anyone can do exactly what I did. No school, mm -hmm. no license, no accountability, no test, no one to make sure they're doing it right. So when you hire a bookkeeper, there's you no need uh, to make sure that they are who they say they are. And yeah. when I started working with business owners, I would just go to their house or go to their <laughs> office. This was back really? in the 80s, right? Yeah. Before the remote stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they would just hand me all their stuff. Don't you want to know who I am? Yeah. Here's my military ID. Here's this. Oh, people, no. Because You're a bookkeeper, people just assume I trust you. for the most part. Right, correct. Life. Right, right. So that's why I created this because there's, there's accountability. Yeah. I know what my staff is doing. They're in the office. Yes, there's great bookkeepers out there, but I'm betting there's more that aren't. Right, yeah. right, right. So, and you've been in business, what, 20 years now? 20 years. This August will be 21. And having, how? Having a big party. 
How oh, has nice. uh, yeah, congrats, congrats. How how's it been um uh, with the pandemic? Like when that came, did that slow down business, increase business? I'm always kind of curious <clears throat> how people dealt with that um, two years ago. We did slow down. The good news is that we we went. We were cloud based in 2008, so oh I was, really? I was, oh, that was, I was way cloud. before, way ahead of See your time. See what happens when you're ahead of the game. Yeah, yeah. I created my own cloud in 2008, started you. hosting it, and then QuickBooks Online is now the thing. Um, we do both, yeah. but I'm a big fan of desktop because it's a better piece of software. Just uh-huh. putting that out there. What do you um, mean, like hard drive? What do you mean desktop? QuickBooks Desktop is a oh piece the name of, of the name of the software. Put, I'm sorry, you put, you, put <laughs> you, your, you put it on your desktop. No, I got right you. There, As you can right? tell, he doesn't do his books. That's okay. <laughs> no, I got, I got <laughs> it. I'll talk about that later. Just have <laughs> just have him send the bill over there, and she'll like, she'll take care of it. Yeah, <laughs> IRS <laughs> needs to know what now. I don't know. If you don't. Why does IRS need to know that? <laughs> Sons of bitches, lying. QuickBooks Anyhow, Online is a is an on, is a web based. Gotcha. I I see what you're saying. The name of the program. Yeah. But you said you wanted to know the the challenges of starting a business. So it it was an accident, and most people yeah. do that. They yeah. just start because they're good at mm-hmm. something. Um, and I had no idea what I was doing, so I had to figure it out, right? I think that the, the challenge is there's competition, or everybody feels, and this is, maybe I'm wrong, but Las Vegas <clears> is a place and a destination for start on, starting over. Mm-hmm. People come here and want to start a business. And it just seems like there's a lot of self-employed by, uh, owners here, like self-employed uh, businesses, yep. people that come here. Do you feel like there, there's a lot of competition with what you guys do? Because I feel Vegas is really a good place to start a business, but everybody, everybody's got that hustle here. Yeah. Everybody wants to make money and, and be their own, you know, entrepreneur, self-employed. You have to make yourself different. Mm-hmm. Yep. And what I see a lot of people do is they do a little bit of everything. I do this. I do that. I sell. Mm-hmm. Tupperware, I yeah. do yeah. bookkeeping, I sell real estate, mm-hmm. I also sell insurance. Pick one yeah. for crying out loud and yeah. be really freaking good at it. Real good at it. And the fact that you started not knowing what you're doing allowed you to keep an open mind throughout it, throughout it because you said there's a lot of people that do what you do that don't do necessarily all the services included that you do. And I'm assuming that came from you figuring out and noticing what services were needed, where there was a niche, and what gap you could fill. And that allowed you to kind of do what you do by, by learning that as you went, correct? Well, as the business grew and I, people began to trust me, mm-hmm. they asked me to do more things. And that happens still today. So mm. we may bring on a client that just needs us to help with phones. Yep. But once they get used to us and they yep. know that we're real and we've been here yep. and they, tr- they build that trust. That's the thing. We do, everything just grows. We have one that started with just checking his emails. Now we do his bookkeeping. And we do because it's the hardest thing as a business owner, over owner to you know, to hand over the reins. Trust. Yeah. But in order to escalate, you need to delegate, and that's what a lot of people don't understand. Yep. And it's mm-hmm. it's a hard thing to do. Ultimately, they hand that trust over, but that's why well, when, when you've gained their trust and they realize that, they say, "Well, it, what place. what a relief because it cost me X amount, but I'm getting this much freedom to do what I you know." Yeah. So and that's always a hard decision. I mean, I, my experience when. Like you said, delegate, right? Mm-hmm. But the, you always have to make that decision, though. Well, my, don't over delegate at the same time, and don't yeah. under delegate, and that's that's the challenging part I find yeah. with a business because you always got to f- how much time, where is it worth, how much money yeah. do I need to put over here? Like, well, you just learn, you know. You kind of like make mistakes here and there, and you just keep keep going that's the at best it. Way to learn. Yep. I just did that. I <laughs> learned that I delegated too much. What was oh, the gotcha. point? Of, <laughs> yeah. what, what was the point where you really started to go from just yourself to I really need to get help? And then at that question. point, once you had that, how quick did it escalate to eleven employees? Oh, this is a twenty-year journey. Gotcha. Yeah, so, ups and downs. And, huh? and if mm. I'm going to put this out there, no one's going to listen to it. But if you <laughs> listen to the advice that you are given in advance, you will grow faster. And well, I can tell you firsthand that's true. Well, because I didn't did, listen to did advice, somebody, and here I am. Did somebody? <laughs> <laughs> I, I have had mentors and advisors yeah. the entire time. Yeah. And, and I can start with the first one being like the, the North Las Vegas Chamber of Commerce, which doesn't even exist anymore. What they, you know, I joined really? the Chamber I did, of I, Commerce. They, hmm. the, oh, so the North Las Vegas Chamber of Commerce doesn't exist anymore. It was, it was gobbled up by the uh, Las Vegas. Metro. Yeah. Wow. Hmm. Long, long, during the first Great Recession. <laughs> Whoa, really? And what's, wow. as far as following advice, what's your opinion on? Ah, uh, um, the good old days. On, um, I think that goes hand in hand with what 
uh, well, I'm curious your experience differentiates companies, right? Mm -hmm. Because part of, I think people, this happened to me, you have the experience where you get basic advice on something and you just kind of think, well, this is just basic stuff this is what everybody does. And that's not going to distinguish me. But the truth is, I think even basic good advice, the majority of businesses don't follow. Yeah. The foundation, you have to build the basic foundation, right? Get it out of your head yeah, and on paper. Right. And then, and a lot of my point is a lot of your competition, I don't think does that. And so just doing simple, like, Hey, it may seem like basic, but you're, I can't, you're already putting yourself ahead by doing the basic things. It's amazing how many people won't apply that to a business. I mean, this is a whole fact before you run, you have to learn how to walk yep. and everybody right. can understand that analogy, but they can't <laughs> apply it to their business. Yeah. It's mind blowing actually. <laughs> well, and, and I want to do it my way. I'm, yep. I'm, I'm new. This is going to be new. We're going to do it my way. Yeah. And, you know. and don't get me wrong. I mean, it, it benefits you as a business owner to learn your lessons too. And to mm -hmm. get, get your ass handed to you sometimes. And you know, but well, failure, you know, failure is growing. Yeah, yeah. Ex exactly. Growing. But so, so you know, looking back, you can always wanna, proceed if you would have. <laughs> here's what I want to say is this, is that, so take me through the process of a client that would actually, uh, start and seek you out. And then like, what, like what type of clients do you, do you work with? I think people want to get an idea like, what type of business would benefit that you're working with now on this? You go. That is a tough question. Um, Cause we work with all different industries mm -hmm. all over the map. We have clients that are lawyers, real estate agents, clothing designers, you know, you name it. Um, how, how would they? Are they all local or all over the country? All over the country. Most okay. of them, maybe what? 80, 90% are local are, are because local. that's where we are. Yep. And, you know, I gotcha. We I get it. a lot of referral yep. business, but we can do our job from with yeah. somebody that's anywhere. Okay. Yeah. So, and you guys are opening up an office, another one. Is that right? Yeah. It's, I franchised the model okay. um, last year. The office. I really haven't. The office yeah. squad is a I like franchise. You. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I, like I did it last year smart, and I haven't, smart woman. I don't have any yet um, because you really have to have more than one to prove scalability for someone to go, oh yeah, I want to buy that, yeah. right? You got to make sure it works. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And I've always wanted to expand to the other side. We are in the way northwest part of town. And so we recently looked at a spot <coughs> over on um, Paso Verde and- Paseo Verde. Paseo yeah. Verde, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so I think that's one that we're going to do. Okay. And we'll have a few offices to rent and we'll have a little co-working space. Yeah. And then your bookkeeper is there and your admin is there and your nice. receptionist is there and your you have a great vision. is there. And <laughs> yeah. so you, do. you just come hang out with us. Yes. Do you guys have like parties on Fridays or what? I was about to say. You do. We, we do. have a bar in. Wow. <laughs> Dude, and wait, if you tell me you have Taco Tuesday. I'm going to, I'm going to flip my shit right now. Brett's going to leave and he's going to go to your office right I'm now. I'm going to lose my shit right now if you tell me you have Taco Tuesday. Uh, well, well, maybe we can start that on the Henderson side. <laughs> we, we have finally Friday. Finally. Right? See, we look, at, I'm a mind reader because I'm telling you that I was seeking out. I'm like, they probably oh, have a bar. See, I didn't say anything. I'm just mm. thinking I'm, I'm reading so the situation here. The culture of the office squad goes back to my air force career. So they build this culture where they all work with each other. Yeah. No one is better than anyone else. The pilots don't consider themselves better than anyone else, believe it or not. They might look like that on the outside, but they don't. They know that that support is so important. Mm. So I have a group of people that work with me that all work together. Picture this, <clears throat> a office full of women and no drama. Oh. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Brett? None. <laughs> None. Well, but Brett can't handle that because he. I'm trying to get through the clouds. <laughs> Knock on wood, but yeah, no drama. Brett can't. Start to see some light. See, Brett, you, you probably bring the drama, right? Every place you work, so you probably can't envision. And, and Bro, I am the drama. Like, yeah. Unless the client comes in, we have no drama. <laughs> yeah. You know, but you, you know, know, I'm going to say this though. I'm going to say that <laughs> you guys might have a good culture there, but it seemed like a lot of women. There's uh -oh. that behind uh -oh. the talk, uh -oh. careful, behind the Dan. back talk. Does that happen? Careful, careful, careful. 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 watch your you talk. This is the 21st century. <laughs> a lot of women with back talking, man. Like I'm talking about a, in a, in a culture of, of businesses. <laughs> Do they, you know, there's a lot of, sometimes people talk behind people's back. I'm just saying that doesn't do. happen at your A guys. lot of women, important, apparently, according to Dan. So. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and only women, according to Dan. <laughs> Anyhow, I'm sorry. Dan, proceed with your question. Okay, so what I was saying was, <laughs> so let's go back. So let's talk a little bit about what's happening in Las Vegas. And, and let's say, do you guys look at Las Vegas as a whole? Do you feel like the economy is doing well here? Because your business yeah. is doing well, right? Yep. Yes. Okay. 
And, and then how about like in 08? Because that's when you said you went to cloud. Did it slow down for you a lot during? Um, I, mean, I think it did for everybody, but it seems um, like you survived that. So it actually didn't hit us until 2010. Okay. And I literally lost half my clients, <sighs> laid people off, moved to a different location and gave up my spot. So mm. I had to kind of start over again, but the office has always been there. Mm. Um, and I have seen it through both of those, yeah. you know? So now yeah. the house that we bought six years ago is worth double or more. Yeah. Right? Wow. And so my husband and I maybe we should sell it, live in an apartment for a while. <laughs> yeah. I know um, a good yeah, realtor. That's always the problem. <laughs> what do you live after that? <laughs> <laughs> but where are you going to live if you sell it, right? Right. So right. That's the problem yeah. that we talk about every week. Yeah. Where are you, you going to well, live? Where are you gonna, where are you <clears> live? We're going to talk about that in a second about has this market peaked? talk with you guys about it and you guys can have your opinion so let's talk a lot uh, i want to ask about las vegas though um so what do you guys like most about and, and not like about las vegas you want me to go first you go first you, you were uh, kind of forced yeah, to I, live here were you uh, raised you were here were you raised i was here? raised here moved here i was in fourth grade <laughs> i left for college came back where'd you go to school i went to a fashion school in la okay nice yeah so fashionista yes. and then you moved back obviously I so i did for a Three or four years, okay. and then I left again. I moved to Dallas, and then I've been back for three years now. Would you would you stayed where you were at, or would you, did you want to come back to Las Vegas? Um, I wanted to come back. Okay. Yeah. What, what what makes Las Vegas desirable to you? I like the balance of it because you get that, like, crazy Vegas. Mm -hmm. You can go to these, like, you know, master chef restaurants and these crazy Yeah, everything, clubs. huh? But then 20 minutes away is yep. my house in the middle of Summerlin, and it's quiet. And You can be what you want on any particular yeah. day. If I want to go yeah. to the mountains, I can go to the mountains. If I want to go down the strip, I can go down the strip, and everything in between. Yeah. You're absolutely right about that. The flexibility of the city. Yeah. And, and people that, like, what's what sucks about this city is people don't care. What's great about this city is people don't care. <laughs> you know what I mean? You can literally... Be yeah. and do what you want, and people like don't care because it's not them. Yeah. <laughs> so you're saying the restaurants are the and, and the flexibility is what you're saying for Vegas. Yes, yeah, I feel like you got the best of both worlds because you yeah. have the craziness and you have all these you know cool things that you yeah. can go do, but you also have your like very convenient suburban, you know, easy to get around. Because I lived in downtown Los Angeles, getting anywhere. Yeah, was good luck. Very hard. Yeah, good luck on that. Yeah, so now I can get in my car and you know downtown use LA, it, use it, yeah. go anywhere and be there in ten minutes. What about you? As far as what do you what do you like most about Las Vegas? Um, this is actually our second time living in Las Vegas. We were here mm. in God nineteen eighty eight or something. Okay. Um, and we <laughs> we've only been disappointed when we left two assignments. One was Germany, and the one was here. So when we left mm. Vegas, we wanted to come back. Gotcha. And so we were back. And he retired here. So it, and, and Taylor's right. You know, the, the, the suburban part, the outside part, some people don't even know there's an Air Force base here. You know, so if you go. <laughs> Are you far, serious? Uh, yeah, yep. they and, don't know. Yeah. Um, huh. And they don't know that it's the fire the, pilot headquarters yeah. of the U.S. Air Force. It's yeah. their top gun school. So, so, so you, you, are they moving that though? Nellis Air Force, they're not, I've heard that stories that they may be moving it I don't somewhere. Think it's where, where, where are you no. No. Who said that? Uh, I've had a couple of people I talked to that's in the real estate world that said that, that the, the blueprint or the idea of moving it because they want to keep building out yeah. over there and they want to put in more homes and put yeah, in more. Yeah, but I more, think that maybe moving it back, but not like. No, that, I, I heard it's, they're actually moving it completely to like uh, a, a different state. Different. No, not a different state, but I think up more closer to area 51. Yeah, that's only sixty miles north. Yeah, so. but I mean, there's another one up there too. <laughs> Anyhow, there's it's one of these things where they can tell you, but they have to kill you. Yeah. Yeah. Right. We can't tell you, but yeah, yeah it's you have all, all the getting things some you need. stuff here. And the fly, the, what's that flying group? Yeah, let's get into Area Fifty One since you brought it up. Yeah, that's that's what is basic. going on over not, there? Not, not <laughs> Blue Angels. But, uh, what's that? The Thunderbirds. Yeah, so I had a a client who worked at the base there, so I got to go up and meet uh, meet those guys and. Dude, yeah. these guys are like, every one of them's like Tom Cruise. They're like all Back model looking, perfectly fit, like high. They're like, what? The, why because does everything got to be Tom? Is this the Tom Cruise they're show? Supposed to be like the, they're supposed to be like the poster child, right? To recruit people. Oh, but I, I, mean, see, I like, see why they don't these like These dudes it. were like, because that, that, I mean, that movie's naval pilots, What do you think right? of? It is. That, so that's why. Yeah, yeah. I can see Polished. the Air Force not liking that. Um, but yeah, two cents on the Vegas thing, because I, I was born and raised in northern Nevada. 
I came down here like five years ago, and if you know anything about Nevada, you know that there's a big rival, probably more on the north than the south. <laughs> north uh, North Nevada is different than southern? No, they just hate southern. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> it's like they just, it's like you like know a, what it is? It's because they have the most mo- population down here, right? So they have the most political power. So I noticed that if you're, in, yeah. if you're in any state where there's one city that's kind of the biggest, everybody else hates that city. So that's kind of what's going on up north. And so I had this mentality like, <laughs> um, oh, Vegas, you know, it's junk. But when you move down here, what you're it's talking junk. about is there, there is that experience. You get the best food in the world. You have, as far as any sort of um, uh, city options, we have it all. You do have a lot of outdoor stuff like Red Rocks, but even, you know, Southern Utah is right there. And, yeah. and access to LA, if you need to get down to Southern California, is four hours away. So there's, there is a lot of, uh, like Brett was saying, like you shouldn't have a poor day. If you, if you do, you're just not doing anything, you yeah. know? So Don't mention awesome shopping. Yes. My wife likes it. Oh yeah. I, I, sorry. I forgot about that. Shopping. I find the best heels in this town. <laughs> Yeah. Brad, what do you do on your spare time, man? You go shopping. Don't worry for about it, man. We're free to do what we want in this world. Why don't you just live and let live, Dan? So, so let's say this. So, you, so you said, what do you not like about Las Vegas? Is there something? Always, I always talk about that, but what do you guys not like about Las Vegas? July, yeah, the heat. Yeah. August, yeah, June, the heat, right? <laughs> yeah, but it's temporary. You know, and I'm a military spouse. You can live anywhere. Do you have a, put you, up with anything? You guys, she's lived in Germany. Do you know how cold it gets in Germany in the it's winter? Dude, she appreciates Germany. the desert. I'm from yeah, the Midwest, like, and I'm telling you, yes, I Besides, love the desert. Air too. conditioning, pools. Mm. Yep. Do you have yeah. a pool at your house? I don't like that everybody wants to come here. Yeah, so yeah. Dan, I don't like that. Dan's Dan's a little <laughs> spoiled by everything. He's a Southern California in, kid. In '88, so. what was <laughs> what was the population? I was have it, no idea. Wasn't it like only 200,000 or something crazy? Probably. Something like that. I think in 76 or 75 or 76, it was only like 150,000 or 200,000, something like that. And we're at 2.3 like now. Yeah. I so, think the whole area is just So, so you guys, you ladies have seen uh, the housing insane. market. You've seen this economy grow. Uh, what do you guys think about the housing market? Do you guys feel, because look, you guys, you're not real estate agents, lenders, people out there. But I mean, as an average person out there just looking at homes and just saying, should I sell? You said, obviously, the first one was, um, <clears throat> where, do, where do I go? So is this a healthy market? Do you feel like we've peaked in a bubble? I, 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 it's, you can't have a wrong you, answer. You can't, right? I, I, hope it's just it, I hope it still goes. You know, I want my house to be worth a million. There we go. Keep going. It will be someday. Yeah, someone who's never bought a house and would Taylor's like to probably the, the better person. Yeah, yeah so that. you're, she's you're, look, she's yeah, looking. you got she's more of an opinion she's on it. She's a struggle. Yeah. yeah. Are, I, I get it. Are you, are you Gen it. Z? Millennial, I'm 30. Okay. 30. 30. Yeah. Oh, sorry, you look like 23. That's I was trying okay. to be nice. <laughs> well, and, and what's crazy That's about... That's your benefit, <laughs> trust me. <laughs> what's cra- <laughs> so what's crazy get. about the 30-year-old is the millennials are the highest uh, generation or demographics is buying homes right now. Yeah, yeah. and they and, can't afford one. And they can't afford one. You know? See, we got... Because I'm at the, uh, I guess, the beginning of... When is millennial in? So I was 87. But I don't know. Uh, point what I was trying to make was we, we were able to buy right before... That spike happened. Yeah, and I'm thinking now. It, I don't think there's any way I would have done it. Yeah. But uh, yeah. it's just kind of crazy how much it. But the flip side was because when I graduated in 14, there was no jobs at all. Like you weren't making any money, so you had no place to live because you had no money to pay for it. Now it just, there's a lot of jobs, but uh, cost of living's all over the top. So I guess that's the cycle. <laughs> Dan See, didn't like that comment. No, I did. I, I liked it. I was just uh, trying to focus kind on this. Kind of boring, thing. Joe. Yeah. <laughs> I can tell. He's like, oh, tell you're an attorney. Jesus. All right. That's interesting. Let's move on. And then in this law statute 285. <laughs> Christ. All right. So let's get back into this. So you, ladies, thank you guys uh, for, for you guys coming. We're going to have all your information. Uh, great insight on starting a business here in Las Vegas and uh, really giving us an idea about what you guys do. So the, you guys want to check out the office mm-hmm. squad, uh, bookkeeping, emailing, tell them everybody real, real quick what you do as far as Show all them. the, all the things that We're you gonna do. We're going to be here for a while. Give me the top 10. <laughs> bookkeeping, phone reception, admin, payroll management, end of month accounting, virtual address, co-working, COO advice. There you go. There you go. <laughs> all right. And I would say definitely, I think we've moved in a new era where professionals, especially, um, we're, we're in a mobile era now, and that's not going to go away. So I think something like you guys do that somebody you can trust that is mobile is absolutely vital. Because if you're starting up, um, that's just that's what you're going to face right now. Clients want everything to be mobile. So it's so awesome that you guys offer that personal touch to it. And here we go. Uh-oh. <laughs>
Man, I need a better <sighs> song. That kind of makes. All right, guys, we're gonna get right into this right here. We are yeah, going we to get sure started on the like, yo market update with yo, Brett. He's yo, gonna be uh, freestyling part, yo. exactly what's happening in the market today. Brett, I, I want to hear rap it, dude. Rapping realtor, Brett. <laughs> Bitcoin, Brett, rapping realtor. There you go. <laughs> Boom, dropping some knowledge. All right, so this week we have active. Single family residents. This is just Las Vegas. This is not Boulder City. This is not over the hump and prump. Uh, this is not Mesquite. This is just like Las that. Vegas, right? So this week, I should say last week, the actives on the market for single family were 2,587. This week, we have a total of 2,689. So we have a 102 Increase. more. <laughs> All right. <laughs> hey, Brett, do you know? We're um, going crazy, right? What, what was it uh, this time last year? You know, I have no idea. I'll look that up later. Okay. <laughs> uh, last week's actives for condos were 579. This week at 631. So there was a total last week of 3,166 active properties on the market. This week there are 3,320. So we're up, uh, what, 150? More you know. Something like that. So here's another quick fact. The total active number of foreclosures in the market right now, 17. Wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Go back to uh, 2013, that would have been like, what, so 20,000? Here's what I want to say as <laughs> well, like too, that. is if anybody wants to know, oh, Whoa. my God, my Wait a second. broke. Are you kidding me right now? Oh, well, that sucks. I can't Brett, really read this. Are you serious? Yeah, Can that's you, fine. We'll just read out of one eye. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> I want to say this. If anybody wants to know what's coming on the market... <laughs> That kind of ruined my whole segment. Yeah. Just do this, Brett. Just hold up one and just read it real quick. All right. <laughs> I feel like we're out of that movie Christmas Story. It's just forcing it. Well, I'll tell you. Uh, the first line says. All right. So if anybody wants to know, I can't do it. Let's get our stuff together. Okay. All right. Put it together, so if, any, if anybody wants to know what's coming on the market... There are 199 properties that are coming soon status, which means they're about ready to come on the market anywhere between the next couple of days to the next week. This is from condos to townhouses to single family residents all over the city, all different price points. So if you guys want a list of what the ones coming on the market are gonna be in this next week, let me know. And there are also two new pages of new home sites from builders that are gonna be coming out and opening for communities in the next <clears throat> month. So if you want a list of the new home communities that are be coming out in the next month, let us know, give us a message, and we'll send you the information after the show. So I'm gonna talk a little bit, we're gonna talk about what's happening in April. And Dude, Joe, you could chime bummer. in on this as well. Uh, I wanna say this though. So have we hit our peak here in Las Vegas? Because I think a lot of people th thought we were gonna have a, another year. It was gonna be a uh, same year as it was last year in 2021. 2022 was gonna be another banner year. And now this bull market we're talking about is now a bear market or starting to head that direction, maybe. Why and are you this, saying that? I told that you does, a couple, that I told you a couple like months inventory. ago. That doesn't look like Yeah, high so I told you a couple months ago, we're going to even out. And remember the economists nationwide were saying, oh, we're still going to go up 10, 15% this year. I said, no, we're not. We'll, we'll go up maybe three to 5% well, what, what's if, your if even. What's your interpretation of available houses? Is that There's nothing lot? on the market. Yeah, so as there's, long as there's, there's nothing still, on, there's the market, on the market. <clears throat> as long as there's nothing on the market, you're still going to have high demand. So look, so, rates, are, rates are above five. I've seen them at six. Right, six yeah. percent, and then you have to look at this long decade of home. The home, you know, prices going up. Well, <clears throat> guess what? It's starting to come well, the other direction. That's the thing, man. And We've gone up as a market for yeah. ten years straight. People don't understand the big picture how yeah, incredible that is. You can only go up for. I mean, I understand. I, I understand. So the there's is, hardly we, any properties. Have in the we market. hit our peak? No. I would say that supply has to come up. Once you start seeing the supply come up, you're going to see a. I would the say level. the best home in the neighborhood that can offer you a lot of square feet, pool, is remodeled, um, anything that is below $2 million will still probably sell right away, sometimes multiple offers. But if you're talking about a regular home that needs updating, it ha you know, it's kind of older, um, those are, I'm starting to see a lot of those starting to do price drops. And everybody a year ago at this time would take the last sold, and say, okay, cool, we're listing yours five to 10 higher. And you could get away with it. And you look like an absolute rock star to your seller. You can't do that <clears> anymore. <throat> they're trying to do that, or they're even trying to list it at what the last sold was, and they're having to drop the price some. So a house that needs a little bit of work is updated, uh, 
need some updating and things like that, then probably those are going to suffer a little bit and even out more. But the ones that are, like I said, the best home in the neighborhood keep with, going a, up. with a big pool, I wouldn't say necessarily keep on going up, but they're still going to sell right away for full price somewhere around there. So I don't see that market changing with those yeah, too but much. Is that enough homes on the market to make that change? Because you got to think there's, <laughs> no. a, there's a blend no. of, of homes right that now, are distressed. No, but I think things need to even out sooner than later. Well, and Dan, I mean, the biggest thing going on here isn't uh, the lack of demand. I think it's the mortgage rates. I mean, the, it's potentially designed to cause people to yeah, buy Yeah, but less. right now what's happening is all my cash buyers that I've had for the past year that said, we're just not going to compete in this are saying, I'm really going to drop my cash right now because I know I'm, I know I'm going against people getting loans. So I now they, now's, now's they, when they're uh, starting to buy. California? Yeah, of course. Mostly. Of course. So so you guys think that this housing, uh, it's a housing bear now or, or potentially, or you think it's going to keep going up? Because I feel I like a lot of people up. are saying, people are saying that yeah. it's peaked. We're only and we declined the first two quarters. Okay, personally, so, I look at overall as more of turning into a bear market the GDP, than a bull market. You're talking about we declining? No, or home what? sales. Home sales have declined, yeah. and also if you look at California, they've declined seven percent. So I mean, I mean the only reason that home prices aren't declining a lot is because there's no inventory. That's really the only reason. Well, you mortgage have a, rates. You, you too. have a million other reasons why why that is, but not that. You know, so. Yeah, I don't know. What do you think, Joe? You think that, that you have an opinion on this? I think, um, I mean, a, a peak, I would say no. What we're seeing is a level off. And that's, yeah. The, but that's intentionally designed for um, what, what, the, what the Fed's doing right now is trying to slow it down. Doesn't mean that it's not going to peak back up, which right. I think will happen. I mean, here's the way I look at it we've had 10 years of home prices escalating. That's what I'm we've saying. We've had a stock a market decade. escalating for, you know, and, and all these things. We've printed 80%, <clears throat> and I keep on saying this, we've printed 80% of, our, of all of the money in our country in the last two years. So the only thing stopping that we from going print. down is that there's no inventory. But that's enough of an important fact of no inventory where it makes a huge difference. La ladies, what do that's you think? That's where we're at, man. I don't know what to tell what you. What do you other think, than um, <laughs> being, in this, being in this town for yeah. how long have you been in this town? Uh, well, I've been well, here 20 years. It, was there a slimmer? Is what we're seeing now, because we're seeing a huge spike in the last year and a half, right? Is it seems similar to what happened in 06, 07? Or are we talking about, because that's what we're talking about, right? Potential crash of the housing market. Or does yeah. it seem different? I, I think it's steady. I mean, we live in a in a neighborhood where there were no houses for sale for a really long time and people want to live there, there are now three houses for sale. That's it. Right. And one of them is $1.5 million. And think about that. That blown my mind. Yeah. 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 And I was You're like, uh, that's right. Sell. Keep when, selling. Keep <laughs> selling. Yeah. That's right. Because I'm staying right here. When all that crashed, I was in, I was in college exactly. up in Reno. But Reno yeah. <laughs> this th and Vegas follow a very similar path. I'm going to say this. I've said this before. The big distinction that I see was back then because everybody was all about investment and you saw neighborhoods being built everywhere and nobody in it, right? Mm -hmm. You saw that was once in a while, it was everywhere. Dude. The difference now, people can't get them up fast enough to get people yeah. in it. Dude, when I moved here in January <clears throat> of 09, authentic there demand, were a whole, my point. whole brand new home communities where there were like 100 homes and there were three people living there. Right, because you everybody know? thought- Didn't you say yeah. California hasn't, has decreased in selling their homes? Yes. Yeah. That's because they're looking here. Yeah, right. exactly. Well, they yeah. lost. So they, the more they come here, mm -hmm. and the they, more we're going to have. That, a and that home here is still half the price of we're, there. Correct. Right. And we're, we're just is it though? From California. It is. People, listen, home prices, and you know, a lot of local people don't want to hear this. Home prices have gone up. Don't get me wrong. But that gap difference between California and Las Vegas is still huge. Huge. Okay, so like yeah. I don't care how much we've so, got, but it's still a huge difference. Say, There's a lot of gap to make up for before people start saying, "Yeah," hmm, and like dude, maybe I shouldn't. People always say, "Well, how this can't go up? People can't afford it." I'm like I don't know, but it's happened before. Look at California; like it went <laughs> yeah. up one million, two million, three million. Somehow people are still dude, there living. One Somehow. of my buyers from Cali, I was out with yesterday. They have a twenty-seven hundred square foot house, and their house is twenty is two point eight million. That's almost a thousand dollars a square foot, and that's average for their neighborhood, man. A yes, thousand bucks a square insane. foot. Plus, California's <laughs> politics right now, at least for the last couple of years, have to deal with their problems. We are going to incentivize people to move out. That is a fact. That's what the governor said. So <clears> they're <throat> not trying to keep people in. They're trying to push them out because they don't want to deal with the infrastructure problems. Where are they going to go? And that pool is $38 million. Our pool is two. So do you think that Las Vegas is the outlier? Because, look, we, we were talking that it's going to be, you know, I said it would be 15 
percent, maybe ten to fifteen percent of increase in, in home appreciation. You did say that. And now it's, now that. it's now it's changed where it's five to ten. That's what people are saying outside of the Las Vegas or outside of Nevada. So now it's changing closer to the number I said six months ago. Hmm. That's not what I'm saying. I am. Okay. I'm saying <laughs> that is is that gonna I'm are good. we gonna be the outlier? <laughs> Outlier, what do you mean? Well, we're going to continue to keep going because Las Vegas isn't the normal market. People still want to come here. It's desirable, and it's not going to be well, the same same numbers you're going to see across the country. And you know what? There's I follow different – because I've thought about investing in stuff. I follow like four different market areas, Hawaii, Nevada in general, and Idaho. I just kind of will go and look at prices. Why do you follow well, Hawaii? I'm just curious. Because I've thought about buying a house to rent for vacation, but a little bit <clears throat> yeah. down the road. But cool. in that market – so that market shot up, and everything's generally more expensive in Hawaii, for example. Um, Same in Idaho. Right. Yeah. But actually, recently, I saw, because everything moved up the same time, right? But Vegas kept the last four or six months moving up faster than Idaho and Hawaii, right? They kind of leveled off. I've seen the prices drop a lot in, in those places, which is interesting because that implies to me that we have stronger demand in Vegas Exactly. Some of the other hot mod. Right? Exactly. And, and you're it's going to continue to see that. It's also a place to open businesses. <clears throat> yep. Yeah, and the bed. baby boomers, yeah, income tax, right? everything. I mean, you know, so, retirees love love Vegas So, so and we Phoenix, all agree then. So. We, we don't think that we've plateaued here. You don't feel like our levels and our home appreciation and the values of homes and purchasing is plateaued, even though first and second quarter has declined nationally. And also California has dropped 7% in the first quarter. Well... You know, my theory is always that's great, man. This that it, those places aren't Vegas. It's kind of like almost like except for the housing recession mean? of 07, 08, Vegas is usually bulletproof from most recessions. Yeah, but we got. I'm not, I'm not saying we don't know. Yeah, we're but, worst. but but but, other but we than, don't I have mean, any foreclosures this time. Man, I do. We don't have we, bad loans that are yeah, written. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's that's the difference that I'm talking. But we haven't. Again, this but, is authentic yeah. demand because people are buying houses to so, live in. I mean, listen, my sister in law sold her house in Madison, Wisconsin last summer. They listed it at three eighty five and sold it for four twenty five. For like fifty grand over or whatever for or forty five grand over when, for a October? house in, for a house in the Midwest last summer is is absolutely insane. So places like that, I don't get why they <clears throat> I mean, I get I understand why, because everyone was making a huge transition. Um but that could only run its course so long. But Las Vegas, it's kind of like, well, listen, well, man, we're not Cleveland, Ohio. People want to come to Las Vegas. People want to, there's always a reason to come here, whether it's transitory or it's permanent or you're in and out, whatever it is. It's the desire to come here for a multitude of platforms. Yeah, but also, is, is different it's, than it's any not other like city. Wisconsin, right? Well, you got, <laughs> just yeah. like, hence me moving here, bro. I mean, I, like, I moved here. Everyone's like, you so moving back? No. <laughs> here's what I can say. So, I don't get why anybody moves back here's, to Wisconsin. Right. <laughs> I don't know why you didn't grow up in Reno, but here's you know. the challenges, though. Okay. Oh, okay. So, well. so, look, the demand is still there, but here's some of the challenges. Rates are now creeping up to 6%. Yeah. You talked about it. Inflation's at 9%. FHA loans are a thing of the Mention past because home affordability has declined. Mention and that for a second. Right. But we can't get people into homes. Because if you're somebody out there that's looking for four fifty five hundred thousand dollars so, home, you are competing against what ten, so, 15, fifteen, people? twenty offers. Yeah, but I feel 30, like forty grand. Your over. description just keeps reinforcing that this isn't going to go down. Because again, it's all about what I would it's say. About, this I would say demand? that we're not out of the woods. I wouldn't say that just because it's Las Vegas that we haven't hit our peak. I'm going to disagree with you a little bit because there is some challenges. You never disagree with me. Well, I am disagreeing with you uh, because I'm I see done. some challenges. In the future, and you know my way is the right way, Brett, not you. So I'm just going to say whatever. <laughs> just Brett's way of the highway, bud. You know the story. <laughs> but I mean, think about it. You got inflation, right? You mm -hmm. got nine percent. Okay, the cost of living is going up. Yes, I know that mm -hmm. you got businesses that move here to save taxes. But what is that real difference now on on buying homes? Is the cost of living coming up here and creeping up to almost comparable numbers to California? As long as the demand's still there, it's going to keep going up. It's just plain and simple. Exactly. No, the cost of living here is nowhere close to what it costs in LA. Not even yeah, close. That true. gap is. We're not talking about LA. I'm huge. not just saying LA. Southern well, California, California in general. California in general. I would say. Well, I, would I mean, say, I'm not going to talk for a small town in Northern I mean, that's California. Like say, that's, that's like saying LA versus Vegas. No, that's I would not what say we're saying. definitely that the cost of living is nothing like California. In yeah, part, nothing at in all. In any part. You don't feel like we're creeping up? Like, we have $5 worth of, so, you know, gas prices. Okay, that's like saying home, that's like, that's like saying we've got 100 more homes Sorry, in the market than last <laughs> week. We're creeping up. Well, I mean, we have a higher number, but overall, no. Well, I mean, I should say this. We're creeping up, yeah, but there's the gap is still so huge that there is a long way to go before it starts being relative.
Okay, so let's say this. If it was so hot, it was hot of a market, right, which it is, then why are we declining in percentages of homes in, as far as people buying? Why well, is, it's not as hot as before. It's not as high as yeah. before. So if it was still that Because interest hot, rates have gone up. Exactly. And But inflation. So the number of buyers have gone down. Absolutely. But what I'm telling you is the number of supply on the market is still so exceedingly lower than that. It doesn't matter. Okay. So at yeah. this point, if you're an FHA buyer out there, good luck because you only got to, you get a cap of to 420. What's out there at 420. Right. And so you look at, Nothing. okay, it, right. First time yeah. home buyers. Uh, it's now a bigger separation. So what I'm saying is that I think we've hit our peak or we're, we're well, close. Another, we're another close. thing the government is helping with that is what I have a couple of buyers that are buying second homes for investments. And what's the, what's the interest rate right now for, for an investment? Right? 9%. 9%. <laughs> so the government is basically saying we are trying to discourage yeah. as many secondary or investors buying as yes. possible to kick it but back to the not, first. It's you not know, 9%, but, only, but I'm just. But getting, yeah, you, you know, well, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. that's, that's what they're I'm saying. They're only is, going to do that till they get inflation down. Yeah. Once inflation down, they'll ease off. So, so here's yeah. the, here's the thing is Vegas is still a hot market. The housing market's still hot here, but it's slowing down. And I think it's, it's, you know, it's not going to be at the pace that it was double digits as far as well, well that was record setting, dude. That, that's, that's like a, saying interest rates are never going to be three percent again. No yeah, shit. Well, that's impossible. <laughs> a lot of people thought it would. I mean, to say yeah, yeah, people always think everything until it's not anymore. To say that your house isn't going to go up a hundred thousand dollars every year for the next ten years, I wouldn't <laughs> say that means it's a bad market. Like, I mean, dude, your house has gone up every year for the past ten years. Be happy. Yeah, you know. So, what, what do you guys think? You guys think we're going to go through a correction? I don't be less. know. I think we're. I think we're going to even out. I think that I really don't know anything, and I'm willing to admit that until a lot more homes come on the market. So, if you, if you had because a house there's today, so many new aspects that are thrown in on the other side that aren't affecting anything right now because of such a low supply. So, once we get a normal supply, I think we're going to find a lot of reason, results and a yeah. lot of answers on a lot of things. The reason I say that is because if we've peaked. Should people be considering selling their home? Because you even brought it up. Where do you go? But should you sell? If you're asking a realtor, all of you should sell your home today. Give me a call, <laughs> 702-628-3476. I'll help you with that. Thank you. Well, I don't know. Where do you want to go? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that. That's not my problem. But you, sell you, your brought house. Up, you brought up a good point. I mean, where do you go, right? I mean, if you sell your house, what do you do? Yeah, you can't buy another one. You yeah, exactly. It. You know what's funny about that, too? I've, not I've in looked, that neighborhood. I've looked just that square feet. Not Oops. seriously, but gone online and stuff because I was curious because... Mesquite's kind of a cool town because it's southern Utah and it's got those golf courses. And just I like Vegas Mesquite used to be. and Pahrump, and there's no difference in prices. People are paying the same prices for Mesquite houses as they are Mesquite's, for Vegas houses. Mesquite's only like, what, 20, 30,000 people, though? Right? Yeah. But Mesquite. still, it's And they're not, all retired, it, though, it's, man. It's they a, got money. My point is, if you look at big city versus a small town, and you're not getting any relief. You yeah. know, a lot of people go to small towns because I can sell my big mouse and get a mansion. But now I'm like, I don't know if that's possible. I think you're going to have to go <laughs> further out, does. though, because Boulder City's high for price, too. So I'm we're, we're going to go, go ahead. I'm going to bring up these April numbers. Scoot back if you can just a little oh, so you can I read this. See. I'm going to try to just see right there. my glasses on. Yeah, you can't see. Can you see this, Brett? So let's bring this up real quick because we want to give April oh, numbers out. See? All right. So let's take a look at this, Brett. Can you read it? Yeah, I'm reading it. Okay, so April. I'll turn my superhero eyes. Let's take a look at this. So you got... Uh, PowerPoint mode? Uh, cause, cause I like it nice and big. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead, Brett. It's even bigger in PowerPoint. <laughs> Never mind. Continue. Go Damn, ahead. Go ahead, Brett. All so, right. Single so for the past month of April, we had 3,001 units sold and there's a total of 36, 67 new listings, which is down 0.9%. See, that's a huge number. Effective availability 0.8 Wait months. So to keep things in perspective, a healthy market should be about six months. If we have more than six months supply, that's considered a buyer's market. So what was Anything less though? than six months supply is considered a seller's market and we're at 0.8 months. <laughs> yeah, so that'll put things in relative. This hasn't changed at all in the last year. No, I know, that's what I'm trying to tell you. Until we have the number of homes on the market increase, nothing's gonna, you're not gonna see real <clears throat> true numbers of anything. All right, let's go to the next listing. Medium price. Condos, medium price 275. So the prices are going up though. I mean, that's changed a lot. I mean, if you look at the appreciation, that's up 35% year over year. Look at even year. less, 0.7%. year over year. So our median price is... <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Up 35% in price in the past yeah, year. The right. median price is $500,000. That's what I'm saying, 26%. You got $500,000. <clears throat> Half a million is your average... Man, when I started real estate in 2000. Let's look at the stats. Half a million dollar house, I was like, man, oh, those yeah. are like ultra luxury agents. 
Now I'm like, you're only 500. So look at this. <laughs> Let's take a look at this uh, current value here. Let's do it. Current value, 586000 for April for single family. What's that mean? Average price? It means it's up 4.8% from last month. From one month to the next. So, average so home prices went up only almost 5% from... Uh, March to April. What are you talking about coming down? Who's I don't really understand why we're having this conversation. Average number of prices you had sold. Yeah. Up Sorry. 5%. Up 5%. And when they and hiked, 23%. They, they yeah. hiked the Sorry, inflation price. rate, what, at the beginning of April? <sighs> when did they, Dan? Yeah, I mean, because like, in January, we're at the record low. So yeah, within they, the last... They hiked, they hiked up the rates. Was why, that, why did you take my mic away? Because it was right in the way of me trying to see <laughs> that. They uh, hiked up the rates in the early April, hoping to have a, a decrease. I would say five percent is not is not a decrease. It's and, not. And, and I didn't say it was. No, I, I know. I'm just making. Oh. I'm making comments for. Our oh, audience. I'm sorry. I was being personally. Offended. Well, if you took off the microphone, <laughs> so maybe, look at look at condos. Okay, so let's go to condos. That's single family residence. You got condos here. Average price of units sold is uh, two hundred ninety seven thousand. So. For That's, a condo? Yeah, for condos. Say that again. The average price of condo is what? 297000 for April of 2022. Uh, <sighs> Cheap. Yeah, I mean, look, at the end AK of the day. stupid. Well, look, it. that's where people are going, right? They're no, going, I know. I mean, you know, it's just. So time on the market, days on the market. Read that, Brett. Zero to 30 days. Zero to 30 days. 87% of the homes are sold, sold within 30 days on the market. That means that if your home sold is listed and then March, 30 days or yeah. over. So March, it was 82%. And let me this, tell you, mo- this month, it's 87%. And, and there's two so point, we've actually increased and how quick 2. it sells. And 2.2%. It's just a bunch of sellers that aren't motivated and not driving I, prices. Dude, I'll go on the MLS all the time, do searches for people, and you'll see ones that have been sitting there for like two and a half years. Yeah. Not, <laughs> I mean, so that's I'm not, serious. Basically, you know? my point is it'd be 100% if those were priced correctly. Let's look at the market trends here. So you got the uh, single family residents here. Number of closings. Look at those closings. Now, we still didn't look at peak. Those closings. Last year, I mean, we... Well, to, to kind of give you an idea, when I moved here uh, in 2009, I should say this, in like 2007, 2008, before everything had the tilting point started coming down, yeah. the average closings in Las Vegas every month were about 5,000 to 5,500. Right. That was with like literally a third of the people that we have here now. And that was fifty five hundred. We're right. at three thousand. Yeah, that's What's crazy. That, that just makes you realize how low a supply on the market. Because and it's an average of three thousand versus fifty five. Let's 5, look at five hundred, and we have like a third of the, like thirty percent more people now than we did. Median, median closing. Wait a minute. This doesn't make sense. Fifteen years ago, median price. That's the average closing, not the not the total. So oh, our yeah. average closing is four seventy five. So we're up an average three point three percent in price from the prior prior month. year. Look at this. Twenty six percent. Year over year. Almost 27%. Wow. Look at that. So why wouldn't you sell? Why wouldn't you think that we're at our peak at this point? Look at that. Because look, it keeps going up. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, but in 2015, (laughs) you didn't see it going like that, man. (laughs) But also, all those years before, we didn't have all these things like inflation and high rates. Uh, Right? Or or COVIDs. So number of new listings. Let's take a look at that. Um, Again, 36 to 67 units. You know, it's been pretty steady. I mean, we've had an average of, of that amount of, of homes, about 3,500 homes plus. Uh, it looks you like... Think we can look, make- look, look at availability, though. Look at look at that graph, bro. Oh, yeah. This is the, this look at that. That's what I'm talking about right there. Yeah, look at that. That availability. That's crazy. That's, that's, gonna, what, I'm that's, tra- gonna, that's what I'm trying that's to say. That's going to cause the price to go up. Yeah. Can we get like a pie chart or something? <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> so let's keep going. We got This is like the last one here. So we're going to take a look at the uh, effective months of availability. So Point eight months, man. Point eight months. Look, look at that again. It's going down. Look at 2015. Four months. Wow. Four months. Though That's technically not even so this, a, a buyer's market. All this four data months, supports but. the conclusion what? That this is going to keep going up. Well, again. Well, look at the beginning of 2021 you, to right now. You can't it's, throw in five and a half, six percent rates and in inflation. Also, I mean, that looks like you can. Well, this has just started. Yes, that's what's this has only on. this has only been a couple of months. Yeah. You know, really, I mean, people don't understand how but, much but Dan, interest rates have accelerated in we, four months. Are we at the his, like the? I think we're almost there to the most ever lowest unemployment rate ever. Yeah, that's the problem. So my my argument is is stagflation problem, coming yeah. because. Low unemployment is what they need, but you have low unemployment, right? And then we have economy that's slowing. Inflation's still going. It's a problem. This but is, is going to be a problem. But is the economy slowing if, if we have low unemployement? I understand the GDP I don't know. And that's, out, yes, well, but the economy that's, has everything that's the weird to thing. do with people's psychology. That's really right. what creates an economy. 
And so as long as people are employed and making a belief I don't system. See it. Yeah, that's what it is. Bitcoin. Honestly, that's what makes a good economy versus a bad one. Let's look at this last one, condo and townhomes, and we're going to end the show. Number of closings here, 776 units, uh, 24 minus uh, 24%. Look at number of units closing is down s- almost 17% from the month before. Wow. <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> they, that's what I'm trying to say, man. Until that number changes, you're not going to get real results and real numbers of what anything means. At least I'm willing to admit that. Well, we got to end the show here today, so I'm going to bring no, back my mind. Yeah. I want to talk all day. Brett, you th- look like you're coming off your crash, so I got to yeah. end it. You know, you had the, the red line in no, your coffee. <laughs> <laughs> right. So listen, man, you got an Instagram channel. I do. Right? Talk about it. What's that Instagram channel? Vegas Crypto Agent. That's just it. You want to buy some Bitcoin? Give me a call. No, I'm just kidding. I'll teach you about though. Yeah, Vegas Crypto Agent at, at Instagram. Uh, Joe Dragon, let me say this, man. You got a lot of things happening with, uh, oh, yeah. over at the Dragon Law Group. What's going on over there? Yeah, you know, I kind of want to tie in today's episode. So um, as we were just talking about, unemployment l- l- rates really low. People are working. They have money. Um, if you have fortune enough to already have a house, you have that. So this is a good time to think about something you probably have in the last 10 years, and that's asset protection. Um, when you have value, people want it. And they'll do things like, <laughs> yeah, they'll do things like, you know, frivolous suits. When you have money, people want it. Yeah, yeah. absolutely so true. They'll be aggressive and there's see a lot, of, you see a lot more people getting sued and those types of things. I recommend to people what you want to do is make yourself judgment proof. Uh, make sure your house can never uh, be satisfied or judgment. Make sure your money can't. It's all possible with asset protection. And that will give you peace of mind because even if you do something bad, they can't get it. So, yeah, I don't encourage people to do bad, but that's my point. <laughs> I, I protect people. So, um, if you were to, I, I want to say this too. You know, there's a lot of people that's contacted me and say, "Hey, you got that guy's that attorney on the show? Just, just say, hey, Dragon. Just that's yeah, how Dragon. you. Yeah. You got Dragon on you the got show. Dragon I need, on I need the Dragon's show? number. That's yeah. It. That's what we do. We scorch. We scorch the opponents. <laughs> D is for Dragon. N. Awesome. The Office Squad. Ladies, I want to say thank you for coming on. Thank you for having us. Yes, Taylor and Dita Las, Las Vegas. Vegas. Yeah, that's going to be my new one. I love that. <laughs> yeah. That's the, she that's seems the really one. excited about Dan. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, she was ready. She was dancing over there, man. We were, yeah, yeah, she was over there go. dancing. Yeah. I just want to say thank you for coming on. Hopefully, you get some business. Thanks for having us. If you guys need somebody that needs office support, we told you all the details, all the facets of what the uh, Office Squad facets. does. Give them a call. We're going to have all their contact information in the comments section also please like the channel this is the most real behind the scenes information on financing real estate money talk entrepreneurs going on here in las vegas i'm your host dan french and we'll see you on tuesday hi i'm dita clifton ceo and founder of the office squad been in the valley for 20 years soon coming for our second office in uh, henderson at the st rose parkway (laughs) and you can reach us at help at the office squad.com and I'm Taylor, VP of Sales at the Office Squad. Um, and when you email that help email, I will be the one to talk to. Check them out. <laughs> Thank you, ladies. Thank you for watching the French Workbench Podcast. You can find us here every Tuesday at 6 p.m. and Saturday mornings at 10 a.m. to find out all the information on real estate and financing here in Las Vegas. Also, check us out on our LV Home Professionals website. You can find your future home there. A lot of good information. And you can find us on